next primander. It's a bit fussy. Hmm. There we go. For everybody who has the Monday blues, Manda is live on YouTube. <laughs> Manda will make everyone feel better because she's yeah. so cute. I think Manda shouldn't be allowed to watch the movie Office Space because he's definitely got a case in the Mondays, don't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you keep looking at him. You mm -hmm. don't definitely don't want to come down here. It's the Panda Panda. He's got his observer down here. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Cecil, you got to stop messing with this. I can't get him to stay. I got to blame Cecil for something. All right, KK. <clears throat> and that's Mander. He's not going to do anything to you. He's just big. Mm, he's a good he's, boy. He's big and pink, aren't you? He can't help being pink, just like you can't help being white. The Tritons can help being yellow because they probably dumped paint on their heads or something. <laughs> well, at least at least uh, Manor doesn't have that uh, the difficulty of being a white boy in the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> The most discriminated that? against group. Unless they have money, yeah. Poor white boys have a real problem here. What are you doing up there? Kind of funny how the more that activists campaign for equality, the less equal we get. Still haven't figured that one out. Say that again. I didn't. <clears throat> I said it. It's yeah. funny how the how the more the activists um sort of campaign for equality, the less equal we seem to get. Oh I yeah, figured, yeah. Well, I haven't figured it out yet. One hundred percent there. Yep. Well, maybe it's it's a campaign that has another purpose. Hmm. It's a campaign to separate us. Keep us from getting together and saying, "What? Who are these people in charge, and why are we letting them tell us what to do?" Anarchy in the USA. So, in chat, we have Lisa Banerjee. Hey, Lisa. Then we have Jocelyn Triggle. Hey, Jocelyn. And finally, Falcon Sue. Hey, Falcon Sue. Good to see you all. Hey guys. Hey everyone. Hey Kate, you're gonna say hi. You can at least mumble. He, he, he actually can mumble full sentences if he likes to. Mm-hmm. He's a good if mumbler, he's in, aren't you, boy? Into chatting mode. Hey Kate, good bird. Bob bird. KK <laughs> good bird. Hey, hey, good bird. Hey, good bird. What are you looking at the pink bird for, huh? What are you looking at the pink bird for? I'm going to take my, my ears out here and switch to speaker if it'll let me. Mm -hmm. Let me go dark there for a second while I get these out of my ears. Uh. 
they're inexpensive, but I can't hear myself talk. Normally, I don't have to worry about that. What are you doing? Cecil Bird? Cecil. 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 Cecil, your number one fan is here today. Lisa is here. Have you got anything to say to her? Like, hi, for example? Hi, Cecil. Hi, Cecil. We know you nah. can say hi. We believe in you, Cecil. Mm -hmm. When Sugar can say hi, then Cecil can do. <laughs> yeah. Sugar can yeah, say he... hi, we've heard her. Mm -hmm. He has three things he can say, but you won't, won't hear him say them in here. Hi, Cecil, and hello. Right, Cecil? Obstinate little boy, just won't say it, won't speak. Like a singing frog. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. What do the you cops want? Attacking the dawn. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? Hmm? What do you want, big girl? Hmm? Hi. 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 <clears throat> Did we already greet our chatters? I can't remember. Uh, I greeted them. Ah, well, hello, everyone, again. I might not have mentioned that um, Jocelyn Triggle says that Cinnamon is much better. She told us in the last me uh, live stream that Cinnamon had a blood feather. Oh. And we were all a little bit concerned. But I'm happy oh, he's better. He's doing well. That's good to hear. It's good to hear, yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it? This is as long as I get my beak pad. Yeah, Those blood feathers can be pesky, can't they, Sugar? Mm-hmm. Is that her shirt? About those. Yeah, I've had my my fill of using hemostats to remove the darn things. She when she first came to uh me, she had a <clears throat> A lot of problems with blood feathers. Of course, she had mostly just little pieces of feathers sticking out of the follicle. She didn't mm -hmm. have much way of actual feathers that she could reach. And she still had her head feathers. That was it. Mm -hmm. You were just a stubby mess, weren't you, Sugar? Mm -hmm. She was a mess. She says, don't tell yeah. anyone. I'm beautiful now. Not the glasses, please. Once I get my driver's license, you can scratch them if you want. All right, now get down here. Get down here. It doesn't make any sense to you. I don't usually do that to you. That's true. <laughs> Nut. What's up, Mander? Mm -hmm. He's Mander, such a good Mander, boy Mander. I think he wants to go past Lucy, but he doesn't want to deal with her personality. Yeah. <laughs> Better be cautious. Mm, Cecil. <laughs> uh, not Cecil. Mander. <laughs> <laughs> she's, a lot, goose goose. she's a lot less dangerous than she appears, Mander. Yeah. I don't think she could do anything to you. She's just she stands up around. <laughs> But yeah, I think Lucy is half the size of Mender. But she is mighty in, in spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When she does her jungle <laughs> queen imitation. Oh, it's, careful, yeah. Mender. <laughs> He's just determined to come over here. I'm thinking about putting him on this other perch, but 
It doesn't usually work. Once he's over here, then KK will start to bite me. It's basically what he does. <laughs> he's telling me to get rid of him. Get him out of here. I'm in charge. Aren't you? Are you in charge of everything down there? Hmm? Can I cover your face and move him? Can I do that? So Jocelyn wonders, has the weather at your place, Don? He just wants me to pet him. Uh, it's windy and chilly. Mm -hmm. Sounds like not Don weather. <laughs> no, well, it's the wind. It's a big problem right now. It's, yeah, it's, that, yeah, that keeps also the, the warm air around your body away, which might get you into the freezing state. <laughs> Lucy doesn't like it when it's like that, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe by tomorrow it will be warmer from what I'm seeing. It might be warm enough to go out and the wind won't be so bad. The wind isn't terrible, but it's pretty consistent between 10 and 20. So mm -hmm. it just drops the temperature quite a bit. What are you doing? How come you're looking at the pink bird? Why are you looking at the pink bird? I see so. Now, he doesn't want to come over. He wants me to pet him. Yep. <laughs> Smart men, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what'd you say? Rant, 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 rant. See, so? Probably something about the pink birds. Mm -hmm. It wasn't enough, was it? Yeah, I know. Sugar the bird. <clears throat> oh. And in deference to Mander, we only have one bird that might chase him, and he likes to sit here, and he won't do it while he's sitting here. So, otherwise, we'd have Pippa in here, and Snowball. Snowball will definitely chase him. He wouldn't if you didn't run. He's standing up for himself a lot more. Did it a couple of times this morning earlier. So he just <laughs> turned and said, oh, I'm not leaving. You're not going to mess with me. So, Well done, Manda. Better stand up and be a man. Cutie pie. What you doing, Mander? What you doing, big boy? It's tough to be the man. Such a little boy in such a big world. Kind of, you know, behaved yesterday. Mm -hmm. What? I ask if the Tritons behaved yesterday while they were out. Yeah, they did. Mm. Bob and Pippa were both good. I'm starting to get scared. Bob's being good every time I bring him out now. So stop oh. it, Cecil.
Yeah, Bob looked like a real happy boy yesterday before I left. <laughs> Yeah. Look, Bob. Bubbly. Yeah, Bob being good, it's like the U.S. not bombing brown people. You know, just you don't see it very often. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not true. Bob is such a good boy. Oh, he is a good boy. It's just that he has those moments where he just has to go into war mode, you know? Almost every I don't day. think he sees it as a war mode or something like that. It's just Triton mania. <laughs> yeah. Well, they seem to have bigger territorial lines than everybody else. That's part of the problem. And I think the, the Tritons have no problem invading other space. No, they seem not to. In one of that wildlife documentaries in, you know, of Australia, I've seen a sulfur-crested cockatoo annoying a black palm cockatoo by constantly trying to look into his nest. So the, yes. the black palm <laughs> cockatoo was sitting in his nest and then the, the tri uh, not the triton, the sulfur-crested sneaked and looked in and then he got, got scared off and then happened again. <laughs> it's, a, it's a peeping Tom. <laughs> mm. <laughs> sulfur crested, yeah, sulfur crested's all have that uh, that kind of playful behavior, like Loki in the in mythology. Just they just have to mess with somebody all the time. Mm -hmm. How can I mess with you? Bob does it to me. He'll he'll come up and just nip me, not bite me, but just nip me just a little bit, just keep things interesting i i'm not sure why he does it but he'll just come up to give me a quick little nip and then run away <laughs> so make sure you're paying attention seems like seems like that you had a kangaroo placement so in the world they they like to to annoy the kangaroos by nipping <laughs> yeah. their tail end <laughs> <laughs> And there's one mysterious island within thousands of island, the island of Saram, where some pink cockatoos live. <laughs> That's where sugar came from. Mm. So if it's the place where sugar came from, it must be very special indeed. Mm. Sugar came from, peaches came from, manda came from. Or with sugar, she actually might have been born there. And sugar. Mm -hmm. She might have. <clears throat> I wonder if one could test it over germs. So, like, um, if if she ever was uh, in. In Zaram, then you you can test to to certain terms and say okay if if that's somewhere on her skin or so she she has been there. I'm sure that's possible, but if nobody's probably figured out what to actually test for. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's not <laughs> in any interest, but it would be so cool to know. Yeah, Shuggy keeps a secret close to her chest, but I think mm -hmm. I think she might have come from there. And on the surrounding islands live the umbrella cockatoos, which oh, is yes, funny. The servants. <laughs> the servants of the S, yes, they are. Mm. 
on demand prenus. Bring me, bring me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know how that feels, sugar. You do it to me too. Hey, that's my ear you're grabbing there, kid. Oh, is that Cecil grabbing? Yeah, he's grabbing my ear. Cecil. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm just playing with this. Uh huh. Sure. The second I switch it back, you'll start grabbing my ear. And this one, every time I try to catch her, just and she does. She plays with toys a lot, but if if I ever try to point the camera at her, she just stops and looks at me. <laughs> Once the camera's not pointing there anymore. So I delete a lot of videos of her because she just looks at me. No. <laughs> yeah. It's like, here's a video of Sugar doing absolutely nothing. Mm. Fascinating. I was lucky to get that video of her walking up and saying hello. She, mm. she, oh, it was cute. Yeah. yeah I, just pure luck. I just, she was doing something else that I thought was cute. And I just turned the camera on. And then she walked over and said hello. <laughs> Mm. Didn't you? Didn't you, you big silly? Mm -hmm. There's no, don't tell the people that. Mander is still waiting for me to pet him. Yeah. What a good boy, waiting there patiently. I'm going to move, Cecil. You have to adjust and pet the Mander a bit. Hi, Mander. Hi, boy. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's my ear. Stop. And I waited a long time for that. It's difficult to lean over when I have Cecil on my shoulder. <laughs> right, Cecil. Yeah. Such a hopeful look. Yeah, such a hopeful look. What are you doing down there? Hmm? Yeah, I know it's you're looking. what Bob that. did yesterday. Bob was so busy nest building. Oh, that was cute. You know, it's springtime. Yeah, that's what that pile is. That's from yesterday afternoon down there. That pile was from Bob. <laughs> I had all, well, you can't really clean up all of the wood. It would take hours, but I had almost all of the wood off the floor, and he just made a huge pile. Mm -hmm. Take that pile and multiply it by 10, and that's what it looks like around KK's cage. <laughs> looks like I never give him any toys. You put toys in there you come back an hour later they're all just in pieces at the bottom of the cage or around the cage behind the cage Cecil that's my ear Cecil Oh, now you're just going to sit there and just chew lightly? Is that what you're going to do? Hey, Mander. 
such a hopeful look on Amanda's face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, he wants us a hug with Dad. Ah, don't shove that in my head, you big toad. Mm. Mm hmm. What a cutie pie. <laughs> Let's see. Sea salt. Sea salt. You're a good bird, I think. I think you're a good bird. Are you a good bird? Most of the time. Yeah. I think if he could answer, he would answer the way Gandalf does. By good, do you mean it's a day I should be good on? Are you having a staring contest? I won. I won that time, Cecil. Oh, yeah? You sure? More wine and shook shook? What do you want? So much wine. What do you want? What do you want? Mm -hmm. Hey, hey. Cause and I are going to have to go back and make some toys today. I have toys, but the big ones that I make, I'm they're just about chewed through those. So I take the ones that are about half destroyed and give them to KK and then come back in a half an hour, put another one in. I should say with two, because it goes through in about a half an hour he can go through two of those toys. Right, sugar? Cecil, try not to slam that into my head. You could try not to do that. You really could. Mm -hmm. Oh, my shoe. Mander, come here, Mander. And now Mander gets his part. Oh, oh, Cecil, you didn't quite hold on, did you, baby boy? Well, I had to lean forward and you didn't do your usual rotation, so you went flying. Oh, Mander. I didn't mean to throw you off my shoulder, Cecil. I didn't. <laughs> I don't think he believes that, the look on his face. Mm hmm. I was done a naughty boy. I didn't mean to throw you off. Oh. No, I didn't mean to. A little face. Sorry. I thought you'd move like you did last time. No, you had to go falling. Are you going to grab me now with that foot? All right, KK. KK. Mm -hmm. 
Kiki has been on a mission to see just how busy he can keep me making toys. Fortunately, Cecil's backed off, but not Sugar. She's still going at it. So used to be able to get away with making five toys a day. Not so much now, huh, Shug? What are you doing? What are you doing up there? Hmm? Look. Okay, that's enough for now. That's enough for now. You don't like when I say that's enough, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> That's never That's enough. enough. That's enough. Cecil's taking the escalator down. Or something better to whack me with? Okay. The Cecil modified toy. See, it looks like a toy that's right off the shelf. Sorry, Cecil. Sorry. Just bugging you today, aren't I? But I just want to turn it around. There's a bead inside there. Cecil put the bead in. He made it his own. Oh, you got around her, did you? You all proud of yourself for doing that? Oh, I Amanda back in his board. What is Lucy doing? Being a pain. Amanda, are you visiting an auntie? That was a short flight. Amanda! What are you saying, Amanda? Amanda wants some action. No, Daddy's making jungle sounds. <laughs> I think Zoom or something has muted it in, in my place. <laughs> I just had done. But not Mander. <laughs> mm, that's too bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't hear him either. I don't think there's any way to change that. Nope. There are. You never know. They want, they'll go in and change things on occasion, but I don't see anything changed. We have a super quiet chat today. 
Mm. So if anyone has questions or so, feel free to, to ask and write in chat. But we also can meditatively just watch Mander. Yeah. It makes fun. We can contemplate the pink. <laughs> Yeah, they're all doing fairly well right now. Lucy's eye is okay today. I have to check it twice a day, but she's not showing any problem with it. Ever since Bob messed with it, it's not been normal. It gets it gets irritated, so I have to put um, flibroprofen in it on occasion, and then just wetting drops on other occasions. Uh, Pippa's still, I've got her on Batril right now because she got a little bit of a inf uh, infection in her, close to her nair that has spread, I think, down a little bit towards her respiratory tract, so she's on Batril for the fifth day. Um, you know, ups or downs on all paradol, so they all are maintaining there right now. I have to come up with a new trick to get it into him because he's figured out the latest one. <laughs> Whatever they did when they when they gave it to him, he, they made him just absolutely not want to see a syringe. The second he sees a syringe, he does everything he can to try to avoid it. Yeah, that's and, a shame. And it's tasteless. You no, know? it doesn't have any flavor to it. And putting water into his beak, but he doesn't want to do it. So he doesn't need much, but if he doesn't get a, just a little bit, then he starts tearing up his primary feathers. So. All right. KK bird. KK. KK the bird. Okay, bird. Oh, well, Rosebud joined us. So, hello, Rosebud. Hello, Rosebud. You still have to turn around once in a while, don't you? Just to make sure the pink bird isn't coming over. Yeah. He's actually not much of a threat. Wait, Manda is not a threat. <laughs> I don't think Manda could threaten anything. Mm. He's so scary. What's happening, baby Huey? Huh? Yeah, he's a threat. He's just gonna. I'm gonna hug you and I'm gonna squeeze you. Right? He almost. Know. He almost always squints his eyes when I start <laughs> using that voice, the baby <laughs> Huey voice. He's just. And he's playing with his own gum that he makes there. Jasmine is still sleeping. Yeah. The meeting isn't over yet, so she's still sleeping. Oh, my guys. This bird. The goosey goose bird. Oh, sugar has an itch. Oh, gosh, is she big?
What are you doing? What are you doing? Manner. KK still watching you? Yep. I don't suppose that's a mutual admiration society, is it? Mm. <laughs> mm, somehow I doubt it. Yesterday, Jasmine was also back there and uh, Snowball sneaked back there. And then Jasmine was like, oh, Stalker, when you are here, you could preen me and just had the her head under Snowball's beak. And he was like, no, I cannot touch the Molokken. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know what to do. Yeah. And then I think after that, Jasmine had a fit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> she did. Which she does quite well. Mm. Mm. She's good at doing having fits. Yeah. Also, KK was funny yesterday. He hanged back there on the cage, and we we don't know why, but he, he screamed for about 10 minutes. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I think it was the invisible floor people again. Yeah, must be. Sometimes he, he seems to see something next to the door on the floor. Yeah, he has, I don't know what the issue is, but he's got something about being over there that makes him. Yeah, and then Ambassador Cecil went over but couldn't do anything. So he just came back. <laughs> then was like, hey, Cecil, go over and tell your friend. <laughs> nah, didn't work. <laughs> I mean, you are quite near to Area 51, so I think KK is probably seeing something that the rest of us can't. Mm -hmm. Something freaky. Mm. Mm, Lucy, what do you think? What what will we find there? The, the biggest popcorn storage in the world. <laughs> the, the secret recipe for french fries. The original one. Shiki, what do you think? Yeah, it's just an aircraft hangar packed with experimental snacks that birdies would love to eat up. Hmm. Hey, Shug. Rosebud says they feel energies. Yes, they do. Mm, definitely. We can see them, too. Those eyes are incredible. You can't hide your emotions from these guys. I once had an uh, emotion ring, and it actually worked for me. Ah, mm. cobalt. <laughs> cobalt, cobalt, cobalt chloride changes with temperature, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny. I had it in my teens. <laughs> Love mm, to. Yeah. It it was just so wonderful, colorful when when I got somehow in this time where I had a lot of mood changes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, happy, sad, angry, <laughs> bored. <laughs> yeah. Did Did you get a little leaflet with it that told you what color was supposed to be or emotion? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I have one of them as well. 
I was the mad scientist when I was a kid, and one of the things I had was cobalt. I had a chemistry set, but one of the things in there was cobalt chloride, so I got to play with all that color changing stuff. So when they started making moon rings, I went, cobalt chloride, is it basically, it just reacts to heat like that. You put it in something, and it'll change color. Mm-hmm. I mean, to the temperature. So if you're if your uh, capillary system gets contracted, you're upset. It's gonna the temperature is gonna drop on your skin. So the cobalt chloride will change towards blue. And if your hand, if your if your circulation is good, it'll it'll turn pink. So it is a good it is a good uh, way to tell what your circulation is doing in your hands. My hands had almost always stayed blue. I didn't know why at the time, but I know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My hands are just cold, so. So Colin Thurston has joined us. Say hello. Good to see you. Hello. Amanda, say hello. Be polite, Cecil, Amanda. Say, say hello, Cecil. Uh, Cecil, yeah, with that face, one feels welcome. <laughs> what are you doing? Aww. You're doing, doing something weird with his face. What are you doing with your beak there? Mm -hmm. speak of shop that's because he's pulled the lower part of it back mm -hmm. what are you doing what's going on with you <laughs> being silly Cecil he's just being silly probably and he is quite silly so work on your beak again it's time to work on this one's beak again Lucy's probably needs work. Well, the upper one always does, but last time I didn't even have to touch the lower, which is unusual. You never have to work on your beak. It always grows in just right. So we have a new chatter here and a question. Um, it's Candice Roger. And the question is, how can I get my Moluccan to stop harassing my little dog? He doesn't bother the bird at all. But Sydney will turn around and nip at the poor old man just because he can. It's, it's complicated in that there's a lot of different techniques in, in training. Um, And for a prey animal to try to do something to chase away a predator is not unusual. Um, you would probably not want to have a, uh, a lion sitting next to you either. Um, although some birds do get an, end up with an affection for dogs, it's, it's better to keep them as far apart as possible even if it's a small dog, um, because they're the descendants of wolves. Um, what you can try to do is you can figure out what their favorite treat is, take it out of their diet, as always, using it as a training food, and give them that uh, reinforcer intermittently while the dog is around them. So they start to associate the reinforcer with the presence of the dog. You don't want a bird to become too familiar with a dog, but at least this way you could limit um, the bird's reaction to some degree. It'll be looking for a treat from you rather than than uh, paying attention to the dog. But again, you have to be careful with that because if if the bird realizes that by making a, uh, a lunge at the dog, it's going to get a treat, <laughs> then it's going to lunge more. So you have to catch the bird while it's not being, um, not being showing any kind of signs of aggression towards the dog. And that's when you'd have to give it the reinforcer, whether it's a sunflower seed or a, a piece of a cashew or whatever the animal's favorite, whatever the bird's favorite uh, treat is. You don't know that. I've said this a hundred thousand times, but you just take a tray and lie it, put a whole bunch of different things on it that the bird may eat, whatever the bird takes first, that becomes the training food. And we may have to redo that occasionally because we out, you know, we change tastes too. One week we want one thing, you know, and six months later we want something else. So, um, but you have to make sure that you only give them that, 
that particular little treat while they're doing the behavior you want. And that means while they're doing the behavior, if you go to give the treat to the bird and it starts to lunge at the dog, you have to pull the treat back. Otherwise, you're reinforcing the behavior you don't want. Um, it's like when you're training them to step up, you don't give them the treat after they're sitting on your hand <laughs> because you're rewarding them for sitting. They won't, you wouldn't either. Uh, if you went through, a, we have a simulation where humans go this through this kind of thing. And uh, if you get rewarded for doing something, you're going to uh, increase that behavior. That's just sitting, it's just sitting. So again, you have to make sure that you give that treat um, only when the uh, the bird is not being aggressive. And from the way it sounds, it's not being aggressive that much. So what I would say is maybe once every minute, give a small piece of treat, such as a sunflower seed in the shell. Give it If that's what they like, that's their favorite, give it to them. Wait another two minutes, do it again. Use your watch. And then you can also do the intermittent, which is to say you give them uh, a treat occasionally while they're behaving. Um, that won't train the bird not to do it as much as it will make the bird behave at that time. Um, they've done a lot of research on this with autistic children. So it's like my, the, uh, my first trainer who was teaching me how to, to deal with all this uh, doesn't like the intermittent method, giving, giving a reward. When you're rewarding, you're, you're rewarding a behavior just giving them a reward without any particular behavior. Um, and it does not seem to have an effect, much of an effect the day after. But if you do it on an, uh, on an interval, say once every minute or once every two minutes, um, do, that doesn't mean vary it. If you're going to vary it and do it three minutes and one minute, then you know now you're on a varied routine and that's different. But the bird will be waiting. Okay, I'm going to get a treat. And it'll be counting down. Believe me, they have a good sense of time. So the bird will be counting down. I'll be getting that treat just about now. So at first, you could try the intermittent technique just to calm the situation down and then go to a timed, the timed version. They're two different methods, actually. They sound about the same, but they're two different methods. And later on, you can start to stretch it out a minute. You know, if it's two minutes, two minutes, 10 seconds, two minutes, 20 seconds. Don't, don't make those changes over a day, over a week, that kind of thing. What are you doing? What are you doing up there, girl? Mm -hmm. Pink. I haven't actually read of any bird hurting a, a cat or a dog in any serious way, although it may have happened. I haven't heard of it, but I've certainly heard of dogs killing birds. So you, that's where you have to be careful. Um, yeah, it looks like it's. Uh, a little dog and a molokken, so I think the size is, and the dog doesn't show any interest in the bird so far. Well, that's good. You want to, the dog shows an interest in a bird, it's a dangerous thing, so you don't want that to happen. Um, and I don't care how small the dog is, because I've seen these little ankle biters coming after, come, came after my ankles, and you know they're serious about biting you, and the thing is, they they have you know the way dogs eat. They have nasty bacteria on their teeth. If they bite your bird or even slightly pierce the skin, you've got to go in and get them the bird on antibiotics right away and have that injury taken care of. So same with cats. All of the uh, human beings, too, not that you go around biting animals. I've heard of it, seen evidence of it in newspapers and things. But um, mammals have horrible mouths. Birds, if you get bit by a bird, it's more likely that the bacteria on your skin is going to hurt you than what's in their, their bee. 
Um, so an angle biter has just the same, maybe even a bigger chance of hurting the bird because you know, the person might think, well, they only, they only bit them a little bit. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've seen a little bite be, bird be dead within two days from a little bite. Yeah, if so. you think about how bad dog bites can be in humans, it's even worse than a bird because their bodies just don't don't have those bacteria. You've got none yeah, and it, it can cause an irritation of the skin and the bird might actually cut itself open and bleed to death too. That could happen. So size of the dog, yeah, bigger dog might get to be quicker. You know, you got a you got a dog that weighs 110 pounds. If it goes after your bird, that's probably going to be quick. But you got a little one, it could be, uh, you know, a week or two watching your bird die. So, most rescues are not too concerned about house cats if they've never been outside and they show no interest in the bird. Uh, but dogs, they always flag as a danger. So. I just know from um, Maxwell Bird's owner, um, he has a cat too, and then he has them, but when they are out, he has them in, in separate rooms. Yeah. Well, most cats are afraid of birds, uh, house cats, not the ones that go outside. But if it's ever been an outside cat, you don't want it anywhere around a bird. But when a bird fluffs up, it does a rouse <laughs> that it only has to happen once most cats will see that and they won't have anything to do with that bird that thing turns into a giant monster i don't know what goes on in their heads but all the uh all all the vets that i've talked to about it and the other people who are trainers say that house cats don't seem to be an issue that doesn't mean there can't be one but they don't seem to be where a dog that is even just the most loving little sweet dog you know they've been known to turn on their humans so it just takes one you know one time so if you've got a dog you have to have some antiseptic around that's safe for the bird uh probably super clot is your best bet and then be ready to take them straight to the vet and anyone who lives where there aren't any avian vets don't have a dog because <laughs> you know, the chance of the even if they're just if they they become friends and start playing the chance of a bite and having to go in and uh get your bird cared for are pretty high so we never recommend having a dog where there's no avian vet i like i like cats um okay with dogs but i don't have either because I don't like having predators around prey animals. Even though I'm a predator, all humans are. It's okay. Cecil can subdue you with his plush toys. He keeps he the flock safe. He does. My oh boy. How you doing, Cecil? He's such a good bird. He's a little odd, but he's a good bird. But it looks like Sydney, the Moroccan cockatoo, is a good tour. So he loves chewing up boxes and also is busy with his toys in his cage. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. It does. Uh -huh. Sydney is a rescue. He was adopted about nine months ago. Oh, he's a newbie. Mm -hmm. And he is very interested in his doggy brother. So <laughs> the best thing is to yeah divert him towards other hobbies. <laughs> well, that's another thing. If you get a dog that is too hyper around a bird, you can what you can do is take the dog out. I heard it first about this about an incident with a cat. Yeah, it's but... not the dog in this case. No, but I'm just saying I'm just being hypothetical. If it if a dog was just too hyper, not necessarily focused on the bird. That would be bad. But if you got a dog that's hyper, just take them out and play with them. Or throw the ball until they can't walk anymore. Or get them so tired. And then, then you've got a, an animal you can deal with. 
that's a motivating operation and we use it with birds too. So if we've got a bird that it gets hyper, we uh, find a way to get that hyper energy out before we work with them. So it's just called a motivating operation. So if you're tired, you're not too motivated. It actually lowers your motiva motivation, but could increase it for something else like training. With Cecil, when you go to train him, you want him to be interested, but not running around and trying to hit people with a toy. <laughs> when he's like that, it's hard to train him. You have to get him where he's like this. Hi, hi, Cecil. What's up? But he's not interested. Come here. Come here. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm messing with the Cecil. I'm messing with the Cecil. Hi, boy. Now I've got his attention. Hi, baby. How you doing? Well, it's that time again, folks. So, hope to see you all again on Wednesday. And thanks, Amy, and thanks, Eleanor, for being here to moderate. We'll take care thank of people. Thank you, John, for the stream. Well, and you can thank KK. Because for being he's a making, good boy, he's making toothpicks for all of you. Hmm, that's a helpful boy. Not that any of them need toothpicks because they don't have teeth, but it's a kind thought. Yeah, I guess they're beak picks then, aren't they? <laughs> they make the, they'll make a long one, like especially KK. He'll make a long one and then he'll grab it and he'll use it to scratch his back. <laughs> These guys, yeah, these guys are tool makers. So, mm -hmm. and we used to say only humans make tools. Oh yeah, we used to say a lot of stuff we've been proven wrong about. But thanks, guys. We will see you hopefully on Wednesday, and we're out of here. Bye.